You know, you always uh, realize you could have done something differently than you did. Was I ever scooped about something? Um, you know, we, we lost out in the race to clone aisle four. Um, so that was a disappointment, but when I looked at the, 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 how we were doing it and how this, people had done it successfully had done it, I felt that they, uh, they had done it better than we had. That was okay. Um, one of the things, I wouldn't call it a disappointment, quite the opposite, but I've had good luck with people doing things you know, in the lab that I wasn't directly involved in. And the best example, so we had a wonderful example of what could be done. So I had a postdoc who came to me quite, uh, again, quite, I would say, from my point of view, very accidentally. This is a man named Mark Davis. So Mark had been a um, PhD student at Caltech, working with Lee Hood, who was a great figure. And uh, Lee Hood, of course, had been fundamentally a great protein chemist, a great sequencer. And Mark came to his lab just at the, uh, uh, the time when the molecular biology era was really getting going, and just at the time when Susumu Tonegawa had figured out that you could understand the mechanisms through which antibodies, the antibody genes were assembled. And Mark learned molecular biology, and he and one of his colleagues were instrumental in Hood moving from the protein chemistry to molecular biology. And in the course of that, they made lots of major discoveries about the organization of immunoglobulin genes, et cetera. And Mark was a star. And he came to visit Bethesda one day, and I didn't know why he had come, but we were delighted to have him there. He was terrific. And he announced he wanted to be a postdoc. So he wanted to learn about immunology. He said he knew about chemistry, molecular biology, and, but Lee Hood really wasn't a true immunologist, quote unquote. Lee wouldn't like that, but he was a great scientist. I mean, but we were, you know, the hardcore immunologists, and he wanted to learn that. So he came to the lab, and we worked on a couple of really interesting projects together. And everyone recognized this is a man of surpassing ability. So um, after, a, I think, about a year, we, we, all of us, when I say we, I mean, I was the chief of the lab, but we're several other pre PIs in the lab, very good people, and we all agreed this was something special and we should do something. So, and, and Mark had the idea that it should be possible to identify the T cell receptor. In that era, the T cell receptor was known the T cells had a receptor for antigen but it wasn't known what it was. It was regarded as the greatest problem in the field at the time, um, what the chemical nature of this receptor was. And um, Mark had an idea of how it could be done. So we agreed what we did. We established, you know, instant group. We found a, we, we cleared out a lab for him. Uh, one of my postdocs and one of Ron Schwartz's postdocs was excited, went to work with him. We found him a technician. So we had a little group of four people, and in six months he'd cloned the T cell receptor. It was a great, great accomplishment. Um, or, um, and you know, we all looked on from a distance, <laughs> but we all restrained the idea that we sh our names shouldn't be on this paper. He had done it also, and that was probably the wisest thing I ever did because it made me a friend for life. Because <laughs> in other settings, um, in other labs, it would not. You know, the lab chief might have insisted that his name go in this paper. It would have been wrong, absolutely, and Mark did it. He was a wonderful, well, he is a wonderful scientist. But the great advantage of doing it that way was, you know, we, to this day, uh, have the highest regard for one another. And, you know, and so that was a wonderful experience. So uh, could I have done it myself? The answer is I would have never, never succeeded. <laughs> I guess it's a disappointment that I didn't do it, but not a realistic one. In other words, you should be disappointed when realistically you could have done the experiment you failed to do. But I, I, I don't think realistically I could have done that experiment, and Mark could. And that was, you know, we provided him the, so to speak, uh, setting in which it could be done, the resources to do it, but it was a great experience. And there have been a few other examples uh, through the, the lab where things like that have happened. Um, you know, maybe I'm too good-natured to, I can't think of great disappointments in, uh, 
in that respect. There are always things we could have done better. Maybe I should have, you know, they're catching new trends, being ahead of the game. Um, you know, the whole idea of the innate immunity revolution that Charlie Janeway instituted, another postdoc. Um, the idea that Charlie had, which got such prominence, was quite straightforward. Not, I couldn't say anything. He, he enunciated it in an exquisitely, you know, clear way that galvanized the world. But the idea itself that that there had to be chemical structures that were held in common by pathogenic organisms that would tell the immune system it should respond. That was a good. That was a, probably well accepted. Indeed, just as an example, the laboratory I had, the Laboratory of Immunology, was created in 1957. The first chief of that laboratory is a man named Jules Freund. Now, you're not an immunologist or a scientist, but everyone knows his name because whenever you try to immunize an animal with an antigen, if you're going to be successful, you have to add something called an adjuvant. And the most famous adjuvant was Freund's complete adjuvant. And it's adding an oil and water mixture with dead mycobacteria tuberculosis. And why did you do that? Well, we sort of, we don't really know, but we knew it sort of juiced up the immune system, if you like. Now, we knew that you had, if you didn't do that, you would get little or no response. So Charlie took that I mean, and, and he clearly enunciated the point. And that had a galvanizing impact. And then, of course, shortly thereafter, a couple of years later, a discovery in Drosophila led to understanding the chemical basis of how this all worked. And now that's been a revolution in science. In fact, last year's Nobel Prize was shared between uh, Ralph Steinman for the discovery of dendritic cells and uh, Jules Hoffman and Bruce Beutler for understanding the chemical basis of one aspect of innate immunity, which was the follow-on to Janeway's work. Janeway would have shared in the prize probably had he not, you know, unfortunately died uh, several years earlier. So, um, and I would say that's uh, an, an idea that one should have had. You know, sort of, I wouldn't say obvious, but and then there were a few, the problem, but I can't say in honesty that I look back and say, oh, I wish I had, I wish, I wish I had done better things. Absolutely. There are all sorts of things I wish I had done better. But I don't feel that there's a single thing I didn't do that would have transformed the world. 